Hey everyone, doing a video today on the differences between the 1025R pump, factory pump, and the 2025R pump. So looking at these pumps to the naked eye, most people are not going to be able to tell the difference. Honestly, I can't tell the difference with the exception of I know that this has this 90 degree from my hydraulic kit because it was most recently on the tractor uh, with the modification. This was most recently on the tractor with uh, the factory setup, and this is how it looks in the factory. So I can tell the difference, but for most people to the naked eye, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. So let's break this open and I'll show you what's in here. And then we'll do a little bit of comparison between the two pumps to show you what makes one an 8.2 cc, which is about half a cubic inch uh, displacement. And what makes one 9 cc, which is about 0.55 cubic inch. So that sounds like a small number. Actually, it is a small number, small difference. So you got one or five hundredths of a cubic inch in between them. But move that up to 32, 3300 RPMs, and you're talking about about a gallon per minute difference. So, um, taking the face plate off here, uh, you know, this is what it looks like from the outside. And these face plates on every one that I've opened up have just been smooth and the O-ring has been on this side. Um, I wondered, so getting into this pump, I'll show you in a little bit, they're, they're all made so similarly but they actually vary the size of the bodies. And to me, it seemed like it would make sense to cut the O-ring into the face and put it on. So you could easily mill this down to whatever you want. But everyone I've seen the, the O-ring has been milled into this piece. Now this is aluminum and this is steel. So that could be part of it. Uh, this O-ring is, you know, simple O-ring. Uh, you know, generally it's a circle, but uh, you know, it's in this oval configuration as they cut that in. So we'll put that there. Um, so, and I actually pulled this out earlier. Um, had this backwards. But this is are the bushing sets. And so um, let me put it in here the correct way. There we go. And the way they'll all be configured. Now, the difference in a motor and a pump. So this is a pump, and the difference in a motor and a pump is how much pressure this seal will take. In this case, being a pump, the seal will take 20, 30 PSI. If this were a motor where you could push pressure in this side or this side and actually make, instead of turning this, you would make this turn, um, you'd, ha you'd have a high pressure seal here. So that's really the difference in a motor and a pump. So this one's set up as a pump. You get your tank side up here uh, to bring in uh, low pressure oil from the reservoir. And this is the high pressure side. So I think this pump's rated for up to thir around 3,500 PSI. But again, uh, you've got the seal, the orange piece is a seal and the, this, it, the humps face the pressure side. Now, obviously if, if this was a motor, it wouldn't matter. And, and it's gonna hold pressure on both sides, but this is how it's configured. Now, if you put, if you put this in and you put it in backwards and you put the other end backwards, it would generally work fine. If you put one in backwards and one in the correct way, you'll actually lose pressure and you, you won't have any suction. So, um, but, but the standard approach is, is to make sure that, uh, at least on the pump, that the pressure side looks like this. So, um, let me, I can do it this way. Pull this out, these bushings. this off the back here. This is the back. And see, the back really looks the same. The difference is the output shafts here. Now, one, one thing the back also has are these, uh, these hollow dowels, and they fit into here. And in this case, sometimes you'll see these where these are cut into all four holes, so it can be easily reversed. Uh, in this case, this, this was really built for one specific application. So you, you see these aren't big enough to to handle these dowels. If you wanted to, to turn it over and change the direction of it, <clears throat> you'd actually have to mill out these holes uh, to, to hold the dowels. So 
this is really you know specialty built for one application here so this uh, this is the bushing and for everyone i've seen it one thing i can't answer let's see if i can get it up here 100 percent and i'm almost i'm 99 percent, but 100 percent i can't so if you can see this it looks like it's a wear spot and if you follow the the thread on Green Tractor Talk, I actually called this out saying, hey, mine looks war. This is on every single bushing that I've seen so far. And I think what it is, is when it's in here, that's what allows oil, hydraulic fluid to come up and lubricate this bushing. So that it, it really just looks like it's wore out. And this is typically a Teflon bearing here. So this is aluminum and it's cast, you can see. And you can tell it's cast because see how sharp those edges are. They cut this out, well, one, if they cut it out, it would take too long and it'd be really expensive. But since it's cast, um, you know, it's a lot cheaper to make. And this, like I said, this is aluminum. There's a keeper here. This is just a hard piece of plastic. And then you have your gasket. And this, this is, I think, nitrile, typically. They, they make a couple of different ones. Oops. So there's your bushing set, your bushings and then now if I can show you this you see the gear set right and and to the layperson I think that opens this up and when I say mean say layperson I mean myself when I first saw a gear pump I thought well that, that makes sense it spins like this right or it spins like this oil comes in from the tank somehow it it squeezes it in there and pressurizes it and boom blows it out here at 3000 psi that's actually not the case. What happens is it, it turns this way. And as, it, as the oil comes in, it gets trapped in each one of these uh, cavities. And then it comes back around and it goes to this side. And it actually cannot pass through here. Um, though it can pass up through that, that spot that I talked about earlier, um, but it can't pass through here. And because it can't pass through here, the only, the path of least resistance is out this way. Um, another thing I'll mention is, you know, when a hydraulic pump is operating like this and, and there's no load on it, uh, and you may have read this or heard other people say it, hydraulic pumps don't create pressure. They simply pump. And this is a fixed displacement pump. And so for every revolution of this pump, 8.2, cc's or one half of a cubic inch of fluid comes out this direction now once resistance is created here again if this thing rotates it's going to move half a cubic inch of fluid out no matter what until the pressure is either so high that it um, that it pushes a, a relief valve and then it can find its exit or the pump will effectively it could fail or, or you could turn off your power source. So something like a John Deere tractor uh, with 23 horsepower, uh, I, I could see a situation where it would just shut it off. Um, something with an electric motor potentially with high torque application, uh, things probably break. So this is aluminum and these gears are steel. So, um, you know, if anything fails in this case, it's gonna be the housing here. So pull these gears out. and turn it over and you see two um, bushings, just like on the front side, really identical. So let me push these out. So, you know, within this body here, this over here, this is what, I'm not gonna put the seals on it in this case. This is what it looks like, and it just runs. And, this, and these bearings make sure everything stays centered. And then, you know, typically there's a body around here and, and it pumps the fluid. So um, to find out what the displacement of your pump is, there's a couple of measurements. One is the gear uh, diameter. So in this case, 38 millimeters. Second uh, measurement is the width of the teeth. So you can imagine we're trying to figure out, we'll calculate exactly how much fluid um, gets trapped. So 12.8 millimeters. 
And the last one is the height of your cavity here. And I've measured this before and I don't have it exactly right. I measured it 69.5. So we're getting a little bit of variance there, but right at 69.5. So between these two pumps, 69.5, uh, these, the sizes of these, you're going to have the same displacement here. You're going to have the same 38 millimeter gear size. The difference is going to be the width of these teeth. So that's the 1025 R pump. Let me push this stuff aside here. Let's crack open the 2025 R pump. See if we can note some differences. Actually, I'm gonna put these here. Keep this stuff over here. So again, to the naked eye, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. But there's a difference, thank goodness, because when I, I did this originally to say, well, you know, they're telling me this is a non-season pump, but like, how do I know for sure to like crack this baby open and see? So, same face. I'm not going to take these out. I'm going to be a little bit more brief here. This one's falling apart. But, let's measure this gear 14.08. So, 14.08 for that one, 12.8. Eight two, so we say twelve point eight two. Let's measure that again. Make sure it is fourteen point oh eight. Fourteen point oh six. So what's that point? Uh, point one eight, one point one eight, one point two four difference in millimeters. So simply one point two four difference in millimeters it makes a point eight cc difference in displacement. So the other thing that I think is interesting is when you measure these, 13.56, there's one off the 13.56. So these bearings are the same. There's, these are interchangeable between the two pumps. So what that tells me the housing must be a little bit different. 41.39, So 28 and 39 is 11. So it's basically a one, one point, wait, 41.00, what did I do here? 41.54, I'll have to do, do the math later. 41.54 and 40.24. So it's 1.2, and I think I got, my math was 1.24. I don't know that my micrometer is exactly, oh, look at that. That's, that's calibrated, okay, it is calibrated. Now it's, now it's negative two. It's pretty close. There we go. So, so that's the difference. Um, I thought this was interesting. I thought, um, but I wanted to share it with you all, um, just to kind of get you a sense of, of what you're dealing with. If you're interested in upgrading to, um, the 2025 R pump, uh, that's what you're going to get. Now, keep in mind, if you all have been following along, this is backwards. Uh, with what I did, simply upgrading the 2025R pump does increase uh, some performance, but really it's not very much. Um, and it is, I would say it's noticeable, but not obvious. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, and it's been a while since I ran it in the stock configuration, but it was definitely noticeable. 
but not near as noticeable even with putting the modification on a stock pump is much more noticeable than just upgrading to this pump. And eventually I'll get around to doing uh, some of those comparisons to, to help you understand. So uh, let me put this one back together just to show you how it goes back together. So uh, pressure side going this way, my humps are that way. These I know are on the back because they have the hollow metal dowels. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here so that I know that my long gear goes here. Short gear goes up at the top. And this is where the fun begins. Sometimes these, these pumps actually, I don't know if it's good or bad, they're, they're a little easier to deal with. I've uh, worked on a couple here lately that I have fought with. So you know what? And what I do, I put it on backwards. So pop this guy out. Goodness. There we go. Pop it out. If I would have left it that way, it would not have pumped at all. And the reason I know that is I have done that. And I thought that I broke my pump and I was like, oh my goodness, what, what I gotta buy another pump now. All right, to the pressure side. Face on. Everything genera sorry, generally aligns. These holes are through holes that mount to the tractor. And then the bottom holes are here. There we go. All right. So that's it. 2025R pump here, 1025R pump there. Um, difference is about a millimeter and a quarter um, from a physicality uh, point of view. Uh, difference at wide open throttle, about a gallon a minute. Um, I do have, so I've just finished uh, building an, a pump that's equivalent to this pump in uh, in this placement, but it is about, get my, it is about, let's see here, I think it's 90. So the body of it is this big. So it's going to be something I offer uh, as an option, a much cheaper option than this, buying it from John Deere. But what it does mean is your PTO shield kind of goes right here. You're going to have to cut about three quarters of an inch off your PTO shield or leave your PTO shield off. I can't tell you to do that, but I haven't had mine on for quite some time. And I honestly don't run a lot of PTO stuff, but easy enough to put on and take off. Um, that's an option that I'm going to offer here soon. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, that, that being a, this being about an eight gallon per minute pump, the 10 gallon per minute pump is still um, eluding me, I'll have to be honest. Uh, but I do have a nine gallon per minute pump uh, that I think is going to work out. I should know a little bit more about that uh, next week. But if you're interested in a 20, 25 hour equivalent pump with only one small modification to your PTO shield for hundreds of dollars less, uh, send me an email, kevin at hydrosplus.com. Thanks for watching.